Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm a Dunedin based flow artist and also the head of the Dunedin Flow Arts program. Um, the flow arts are a series of disciplines that draw on cultural and martial traditions from around the world, um, like Māori poi and taiha, um, yoga, haki sack, breakdancing, uh, Shaolin staff, and rope dart. Um, all of these can be encompassed under the flow arts term. And this is because of the propensity that those disciplines have to induce a state of meditative and creative flow, um, defined by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi in his TED talk as a state of energized focus, where one is fully immersed in the current um, activity that one is engaged in, um, to the point where you can lose track of space, of time, and of yourself. It's an extremely empowering state to be in. Um, it feels awesome when you just let go of everything, go with the flow, when you're in the zone, you know, it's in our language. Um, and it's when you achieve a certain level of proficiency to the point where you can just let go and creatively kind of flow. Um, it's often common for people that really connect with the flow arts to quickly integrate them into their lives as a central practice. Um, certain people seem to be particularly conducive to picking up the practice. But the most powerful aspect that I encountered was the community or the culture that has been built around um, shared growth and learning. Um, I came to university at all of 18 years old and I had a rather rough upbringing, so I had a kind of trait, um, a whole host of negative traits, um, addictions, anxiety, depression, apathy, lethargy. I was rather antisocial, way too addicted to my games and my screens, and I spent most of my time in my room or in class. Um, I remember distinctly walking through campus one night, just walking around, and bumping into members of the Dunedin Fire and Circus Club um, on the Union lawn, spinning fire right there in front of everyone. And it was fantastic, you know, to, to see a group of people that were standing up in New Zealand culture, you know, tall poppy syndrome is endemic here, um, to see a bunch of people standing up in front of everyone, um, performing and sharing their passion for their talent and their craft and encouraging each other. You know, people were experimenting and playing and failing and that was encouraged and people were um, supporting that behavior. You know, there's a, there's a tradition in Florence culture when someone drops, everyone claps because it means they tried something new. It means that they tried to challenge themselves. So I rapidly was, um, became really involved in the society. Immediately I was like, these are the guys that I want to hang out with, the, the people that are happy and empowered and sharing with each other. You know, as a first year in uni, there aren't heaps of cultural options. So when I discovered this one, it was just, this is the one for me. Um, yeah, so I started going to the weekly practice. There was anywhere from 60 to 80 people gathered in this massive hall on campus. And that will just be playing. You know, we call them toys. Um, and people would be sharing and learning with each other and trying new things. And it's fascinating when you get um, a large group of individuals that are participating in flow state together. Um, this really wonderful field effect comes about where each of those individuals is driven to push themselves um, to contribute to the community. And you see this like creative exploration just kind of exploding out of people. Um, it's a really, really powerful thing to observe. And the disciplines themselves are really accessible. Um, you know, with the staff, you just literally just pick up the staff and you can start waving it around or a pair of poi. Um, it's as simple as wanting to be involved, taking that first step. Um, and then you find out quickly that there's a really kind of clearly discernible learning pathway. There's different paths you can take within even just one prop. There's different techniques and styles and attributes. And as you become more skilled, it unlocks further moves that then cross over and then you can start doing combos and really getting into a state of really complex movement um, in the middle of this flow, flow state. And then we come to fire. Fire is a really powerful experience for humans. It's the, the, the force that brought us out of the caves, that gave us the capability to alter the environment around us. And because of this power and this, um, you know, the capability to destroy, it is often uh, reacted to with quite a lot of fear. People are often quite scared of fire. And even, you know, the whole rest of the other um, kingdom of animals that we are also part of are just terrified of fire, you know, animals just run away. But um, as humans, we have the capacity to challenge that and to really engage with that as a process. Um, so yeah, so when a flow artist reaches a certain level of um, proficiency in their art and when they're ready, we facilitate their first fire spinning experience. And it's quite magical um, to see this person who's maybe only dipped their toes in recently, has been coming along, take the responsibility and the trust onto themselves to engage in this potentially dangerous activity. 
Um, and it's, it's a rite of passage, you know? The whole community comes together and we watch this person and we support them and there's trust and respect going both ways from the community to the individual and from the individual back out to the community. It's a real celebration of growth. It's celebration, there's not much of it in today's society. And yeah, so when you have these, this, this combination of powerful transformative experiences where you get to really face this ingrained evolutionary fear and you're engaged in these learning pathways where you break down these really complex movements into you know, simple increments that are achievable, um, it gives you a really powerful toolkit that then you can take to the rest of your life. And like I quickly noticed, at least, um, the overspill of these new modes of viewing reality into the other areas of my life. Um, like I mentioned, I was not particularly socially apt in my first years at uni. I hadn't had the same opportunities to grow and develop and learn those lessons that everyone else had. And so I started looking at it like I looked at learning staff through the flow arts, breaking it down into the individual interactions and the individual skills and talents that people were using to engage with each other. Um, and through spinning fire, you know, after you've spun fire for a while, nothing is scary, I tell you what, once you've mastered that fear. Um, so like, you know, holding eye contact or entering into new social situations became really easy for me after, you know, really kind of mastering this primeval kind of instinct that we're all, we're all stuck with until we beat it. And the most exciting thing is, I've seen this effect again and again and again. People will come into our community and they'll show up and you can see them at club, at the practice we have every week. You know, they're kind of looking around, they're not too sure. And then because our community is full of loving, wonderful teachers, someone will come up and offer them a toy, give them a, give them a gateway into the community and, you know, bring them along. Do you want to learn something? Would you like to get involved? And you see people rapidly progress through this pathway. And when you combine those factors of mastering fear, learning how to learn, with a really nurturing and warm community, you get a culture that pumps out leaders and teachers, healers and innovators, and there's one in this very room who brought us our lovely food tonight. And it's a really powerful force. Um, I have a vision for the future of the culture in this country, and it's not one that's built around violence or alcoholism. Uh, it's not one that like, locks people out or shows people how they should be. It's one of openness and sharing and collaboration that's open to any who wish to take it up. This year we've seen a rapid expansion in the flow arts in Dunedin. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, find funding through the Ministry of Social Development. The government thought it was a great idea to teach kids how to spin fire. And I tell you what, there's nothing more powerful than watching an eight-year-old spinning fire like a boss. Like th Those kids have gone through some awesome pathways already. Yeah, I wish I had that at school. Um, yeah, so we're teaching in three schools. We've performed at over 30 major community events in Dunedin, uh, the most prestigious of which would have been the Midwinter Carnival. And we're quickly um, planning for expansion next year. Um, we're looking to take what we've done in Dunedin as a model, to take it to schools, to take it to the Ministry of Education as um, an example of what can be achieved, of how to engage people that have otherwise fallen off the tracks or maybe haven't even had a reason or an opportunity to engage before. So we're looking forward to much expansion. Thank you for listening to my story. The fire has been lit and the flames are now spreading.
Thank you.